The Night Fox Cape. A digital night vision binocular. Now that's the box it turns up in with the white box over the top of that. Lovely, lovely presentation. Uh, it's got a quick, quick start menu at the bottom. So you open your box and this is what you find. Your Night Fox. You've got a USB lead and you've got a bracket mount and there's a manual and there's a strap as well. And there's a thank you very much card saying thank you very much. Please leave feedback. So here it is. Yep, I've already played about with it. It's just a bit bigger than the average hand. So I think there's my hand. There's the unit itself. It's got a rubber feel. It's got two protective covers what you can leave on while you're using as well. What's a good idea because you can if you accidentally do put it down won't scratch the original lenses. We come up and just show you there you've got the IR, the OK, the backlight and then you've got your power button, the mode and then the zoom. It's a two times digital zoom so it will jump probably about eight times I think um, and then it will go back to the standard setting. The power on button, just press it, hold it, it will turn itself on. Just with these caps, they are very dark, they are filtered, they are infrared, what I thought was quite cool. And that's your IR torch sort of thing, what's already built into the system. The Night Fox Cape. The batteries are in, inside, there are four AAs, standard AAs, alkaline, I think I bought some Duracells. Bring it up here, open the little flap, hello, SD card, yep, and the SD card is, yep, you can record it, and then you've got a, a USB uh, what takes like a HTC lead, you've got a lead anyway with it. Uh, if you want to download the uh, the video footage. Yes, so basically it's binoculars what you can record through in complete darkness with the IR running. It's brilliant. Press the OK button to record while it's all on and off you go. You've got different settings for the IR, you just carry on pressing it, pressing it until it gets really bright. You still can't see it very bright out of that. And then you've got your mode button, i.e. playback and delete and all the other features. Power on and zoom. Popping back down there. Your little helmet bracket. Well, I do recommend if you do put it on, keep this thing, this thing up a bit until you get it all the way over and then push it tight and then slowly screw it down. Just like that. Okay. And then if you are going to put it onto a helmet, It's a standard fitting of a GoPro, what is quite cool. Like so. It is a not heavy when it's on. Mm -hmm. So just me being finicky. Here we go. That's how I want it. There we go. 
like so. So your head's there. Oops. Make sure you've got your, your brackets really fixed to the helmet. Uh, if you're using a fast, uh, a fast helmet, these are usually all molded in. This was a GoPro mount onto a, an old helmet I'd got. Uh, so it's got four screws in it. So this thing will not fall off at all and fall off and break my camera. You can always put the strap on as well and have that going around your neck. So you'll have, if it does fall off, it isn't going to go very far. The thing I have noticed for me is, I will show you later anyway, I do wear glasses. So there's enough room here to wear glasses uh, to see the screen and to get good image. I have figured out that I need some, not high powered, but some decent reading glasses, close up work, uh, like crafting glasses for about six inches distance to the screen and it just makes it easier to see well it's absolutely crystal clear sort of thing so the night fox cape all ready to go and play in the dark <laughs> 